네, 안녕하십니까? 남성치과 김기성 원장입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Kim g i s o n g of Namsung Dental Clinic. Today, I want to talk about selecting abutments for the posterior region as part of the master course. In Austin, there are many different types of prosthesis. Cement type, ER type, screw type abutments exist. Because there are so many options available, many find it confusing. There are many different implant systems and abutments. And at times, it can be quite difficult. So I want to give you a brief explanation of different abutments. First is one-piece abutment. There's the abutment part, which is connected to the crown, and the screw part is one body. In the past, my nickname was One Piece, not because I liked the cartoon, but because I liked One Piece abutment. You do not need to find the hex. You can just rotate it in with 30 newton centimeters. After that, you take your impression. So this was my preferred abutment, but these days I do not really use it because a lot of downsides have been observed. The abutment is connected intraorally. The prosthesis is not made extraorally, but the abutment is repeatedly tightened with a torque wrench. After that, impression is taken for prosthesis fabrication. After that, you need not do tightening. The anti-rotation surface Should it move, it will no longer fit the prosthesis. So after tightening it with appropriate torque, you cannot provide more torque. This is titanium grade 5 abutment. In the case of strong force, there is less screw loosening, but there is a risk of implant fracture, so this is not preferred in the posterior region, personally. Final impression is taken. If it rotates, the prosthesis no longer fits, so you no longer tighten it. Before taking impression, you need to repeatedly tighten it. After taking impression, you can use protect the cap to prevent damages to the patient's tongue or cheek due to the abutment. Such options are available. This is inevitably cement type prosthesis. You can use temporary cement or final cement. The advantage is that you can take an abutment level impression and fabricate prosthesis. The downside is that you need to do it intra orally, but the biggest benefit is that this is a most sure way to prevent the screw loosening. That is why I preferred it. At times, the screw loosening occurred, so this was also a downside. The abutment needs to be intraorally connected, so all components are needed to be in store within the dental clinic. This is a stock abutment. Different specifications are available. You can choose plastic impression coping that is in line with the abutment height and take impression. After that, you can make a prosthesis with it. The heights of stuck abutments are 4 mm, 5.5 mm, and 7 mm. I've mentioned this earlier, after repeated tightening, take an abutment level impression using impression coping and do not retighten before installing the prosthesis. As for one-piece abutment, there are different specifications available. There is KSTS and SS options. The image displayed is solid and excellent solid abutment used for SS implant. So excellent solid is the reason why I came to have my nickname. So you have to do cement type prosthesis and abutment level impression needs to be taken to fabricate prosthesis. 
The advantage over TS is that uh, the bevel is connected by the prosthesis, so you get more stable results. It's more stable than TS. As this excellent solid and solid abutments show more stability, especially excellent solid abutment can only be purchased by Austin because Austin has patent. Excellent solid abutment has slightly increased volume compared to solid abutment in reducing the amount of precious metal needed and decreasing the thickness of prosthesis. It has such major advantages. If you combine SS implant with a wide neck with excellent solid abutment, you can get excellent results in the posterior region. These days, SS implants are being used less frequently because there is no freedom in terms of placement depths. Next, I want to talk about two-piece abutment. The abutment that we talk about these days is two-piece abutment. It consists of abutment body and a screw. What's shown here is ebony gold screw, which reduces the friction to prevent the screw loosening and is widely used recently. An improved screw, which is not black, has been introduced. New products with improved coefficient of friction and surface roughness have been introduced to reduce the screw loosening. Keep in mind that this product has changed in appearance. The biggest downside of two-piece abutment is compared with one-piece abutment, there is something we need to keep in mind. The hex or octa structure needs to fit accurately with the implant. It is crucial for the prosthesis to function after being tightened with appropriate torque. Clinically, we need to understand the sense of getting the right fit with hex and octa, and we need to discern that using x-ray. We need to check the hex or octa connection. If you look at this image, there are six ways we can check this. On the x-ray, you need to look at the taper interface as well as whether there is gap. The shape of such space needs to be observed. If the hex of the implant and abutment are not precisely fit, then 0.9 millimeters of gap is formed. In the case of TS implant, as you rotate, as the hex fits, 0.9 millimeters goes in. 0.9 millimeters of hand feeling can be sensed by the surgeon. As you tighten the screw, it needs to be done smoothly. If it feels like something is in the way, then hex is not properly fit. HS, this is the distance from implant top to screw head. This is referred to as HS. Height of screw head is abbreviated as HS, and this is 3 millimeters and TS regular. You need to take a panoramic image and measure it. What is most important in this lecture is how we discern whether the hex has been properly fit. Once hex is connected properly, prosthesis uh, steps are taken. Transfer abutment can be used when implant has been placed in an appropriate position. If implant has been placed wrong, you need to use angled abutment or CAD CAM abutment that is customized to the patient. If the implant has been placed appropriately, you can use a two-piece transfer abutment, which is the cheapest option available. You can take abutment level as well as implant level impression. It's quite convenient.
So there is no coating on the screw as of late. As for two-piece abutment, there are different options available for different implant systems. KS and TS, they're mostly similar. Differentiation of two-piece abutments and SS implant system is very important. This will be addressed later. The cement type abutment used for external type is two-piece abutment where the body and screw can be separated. As shown on the image, if implant has been placed appropriately in a fresh socket, then you can utilize this. You can deliver prosthesis very easily and this is an abutment that can be used when the screw hole can come in the center. Due to various reasons, when it becomes angled, you need to use angled abutment. There is a 17 degree angled abutments provided for TS implants, however, I rarely use them. Because I primarily use guided surgery, there's no need for such angled abutments. Even if there is need, I utilize CAD CAM abutments. So I rarely use the, this kind of abutment to easily put. Angled abutment can be used when implant placement angle is angulated. And this can be used when the upper anterior area's bone quantity and a bone direction is different from implant placement direction. But this is not my preference. This is not an abutment when the implant has been placed appropriately. There are different angles and angled abutments for different systems. This is my favorite abutment. This is a one fit abutment, which is my favorite. This is not a stock abutment and based on patient's needs, you can adjust the gingival line and abutment height as well as milling angle. Cost aside, I think this CAD CAM abutment one fit has many advantages. I use this over 95% of the time and it can be used for all situations. The prosthesis type it can be cement type, ER type, or SCRP type. You cannot use it for screw type. Implant level impression as well as abutment level impression can be taken. As the digital dentistry has developed, you can use a scan body or scan healing abutment for scanning. You can break away from analog type of impression taking. One fit abutment is available for all implant systems. It can be applied to KS, TS, and SS systems. There is titanium abutment, as well as gold-coated titanium nitride options are available, which is a major plus. As of late, for aesthetic prosthesis, a zirconia or Emax press are used this option can uh, block the dark color of titanium, so I primarily use gold-coated abutments. For anterior aesthetic zone, I use a 01-fit abutment, which combines tie base with a zirconia abutment. In most cases, in the posterior area, you use a titanium abutment without coating, but in aesthetic zone, you can utilize abutments with coating. There's slight difference in cost, but this can produce better results. As for one fit abutment, if you make order to Austin Center, Austin provides CAD CAM abutment. And if you make a request to a lab, then the lab will utilize pre-milled abutment. The lab will cut a titanium block and provide a customized abutment. I've told you how I primarily use customized CAD CAP abutments. So I use uh, genuine abutments. Awesome produces these pre milled abutments identifiable by the O mark on the hex area which is a crucial feature for authentic verification.
또 문제가 돼서 어, 요새 여러 가지 여건들이 안 좋다 보니 기공소에서 굉장히 Recently due to various reasons, dental labs have been using cheaper analogs are leading to problems with a screw itself and hex connection leading to reduce the stability. There can be screw loosening and other prosthesis related problems. When you utilize CAD CAM and digital dentistry, when using digital abutments, using genuine products is very important. As for pre milled abutment from Austin, you can see the mark in the hex. You also need to use genuine products from different manufacturers in order to get the optimum results. If you use cheaper options, it can lead to implant fractures, so we need to be very careful. Link abutments, also known as tie base, are available in various types. If you have digital equipment or if the lab that you work with can fabricate zirconia prosthesis well, you can make link abutment using zirconia on top of a stock tie base. Previously, it was quite limited in option, but now different link abutments with various gingival height and abutment height have been fabricated and those utilizing digital dentistry well have been using this to provide aesthetic abutments. In the past, before CAD CAM era, we used to use a gold cast abutment to provide customized solutions. This is UCLA abutment. The precious metal has gold properties. Wax up and casting is done. PFG gold would be casted to fabricate screw type prosthesis. I do not use this kind of option. First reason is cost. It's too expensive. The components are expensive and the materials used here are expensive and lab cost is expensive as well. Most fundamentally, the screw type prosthesis of fit is not really favorable. That is why I do not use gold UCLA abutment or gold casted abutments. As of late, MP cast or CCM type of non precious metal abutments have been introduced to replace expensive gold casted abutments, but clinically, I don't think they show very good results. I do not really like a screw type prosthesis. If you're going to use this, it would be better to use transmucosal abutment or multi abutment, which are going to be addressed real soon. If you insist on screw type, you can use those options. At times, these abutments need to be used because from the implant top to the antagonist, if the distance is within 5.5 millimeters, you need to use this option. You will not be able to use ER type or cement type. For these situations, the implant placement stage is riddled with problems. At times, you would need to use this option, but we need to make sure at the treatment planning stage, we would be able to catch these issues ahead. If you're going to use UCLA type of abutment, there is a different abutment options, such as transmucosal and multi-piece abutment. If you use it on top of connection, then it's okay, but using them directly on implant connection is not recommended. For transmucosal component, Awesome offers convertible abutment. This is a one-piece abutment type. It can be connected to TS implant. Internal type can be switched to external type. There's hex and octa types. 
By adjusting connection, internal type can be adjusted to external type. As of late, with the development of digital dentistry, multi abutments which allow for more flexibility in terms of angle, have been introduced. I don't think it's going to be a problem if you use gold-casted abutment like UCLA here. The reason why you use uh, this abutment is to treat all on four or all on X type of prosthesis in edentulous cases using implanted treatment. Personally, I do not like this one giant piece of prosthesis, but with advancements in digital dentistry, multi-unit abutments, which are transmucosal components, are becoming more widely used. If you use a UCLA abutment or gold-casted abutment here, it does not affect the implant itself, so I think they can be utilized, but that is not my preferred method. Next, I want to talk about choosing implant. I want to talk about the specifications and the diameter. In choosing abutment, we need to look at the abutment diameter and height. These two factors are most important. Additionally, you need to review abutment height. What is important here is gingival height and a gingival diameter. They're very important. Transfer abutment, which is stock abutment, offers three different height options. 4, 5.5, and 7 millimeters. If you need changes, you can utilize one fit abutment or you need to cut it slightly. If you're going to use cementite prosthesis or prosthesis which utilizes a cement like ER type of prosthesis, abutment height plays a very important role in the cement bonding. In general, there needs to be at least 4 millimeters of abutment height. In the case of stock abutment, it has about 6 degrees of inclination. If the abutment height is 4 millimeters and if there's 6 degrees, it is not enough to get sufficient cement bonding. In that case, it is better to do sandblasting on the abutment. This is CAD CAM abutment. Abutment height should be reviewed in relation with the prosthesis material and the space that is available. CAD CAM abutment was fabricated here, but the clearance up to the antagonist was very limited. In this case, a zirconia prosthesis cannot be used. Height adjustment was done and sufficient clearance was gained. You do not need to do sandblasting because this is CAD CAM abutment, but sandblasting was done to increase retention and the angle was reduced from 6 degrees. Within the given space, we need to secure space for the prosthesis and gain retention. Abutment height is very important in choosing different abutments. If there is a limited space, no matter how you give groove and do sandblasting, the risk of dislodgement increases even if you use ER type of prosthesis when you use abutment with reduced height. In that case, inevitably you end up with screw type prosthesis, which I do not prefer. We need to make sure that we prevent these situations in treatment planning phase. Next is abutment diameter. In line with abutment height, we need to choose the right abutment diameter. Transfer abutment diameter ranges from 4 to 7 millimeters. The gingival cuff ranges from 1 to 7 millimeters. In our discussion about implant prosthesis, we often emphasize the importance of mimicking the natural teeth's appearance. For this reason, the implant should be as thick as natural tooth and the abutment diameter should also be as wide. 
While this approach may seem correct in replicating natural tooths form and preventing food impaction, I believe it's not biologically optimal. In my clinical experience, I significantly reduce diameter of abutments compared to natural teeth. The diameter of stock abutments is typically recommended as follows 5 mm for anterior teeth, 6 mm for premolars, while 7 mm suitable for molars. However, this recommendation depends on the implant position. If we are to use a stock abutment in the posterior region, the recommended diameter is 6 or 7 mm. I normally use 7 mm in the case of stock abutment and I use it when the gingival height is over 3 mm. 7 mm is not necessary for all areas, so I primarily use CAD CAM abutments. As mentioned earlier, the diameter of the abutment is closely related to gingival height because of emergence angle. By emergence angle, from the implant axis up to the abutment margin, this is the angle that we're talking about. This is referred to as emergence angle. With increased abutment diameter, the emergence angle increases. The reason why we define emergence angle is because if it becomes too significant, it can be clinically problematic. If we choose abutment diameter mimicking natural tooth, the emergence angle increases. As a result, gingival inflammation or associated bone loss can occur. If we mimic natural teeth and prevent food impaction, various discomforts can result. Hence, abutment diameter and gingival height should be determined in a way that secures a space for the gingiva. As mentioned earlier, emergence angle refers to the angle from the implant axis to the point where the implant emerges to the abutment margin. Clinically, there have not been many studies. If the emergence angle is bigger than 30 degrees, various problems resulted. Also, not just the emergence angle, but depending on whether it is concave or convex, there can be various clinical implications. In general, the inclination should be concave and the emergence angle should be within 30 degrees. That that will lead to favorable results. If you take a look, uh, the abutment to gingival cuff is 3 millimeters. Abutment diameter is 9 millimeters. The emergence angle becomes a 43.5 degrees. This is excessive. The reason why 9 millimeter was chosen was because the cervical width of the natural tooth, number 6, in the posterior region is about 8.5 to 9 millimeter. If you choose the abutment diameter mimicking the natural teeth, the emergence angle becomes over 40 degrees. Emergence angle that I prefer is much less than 30 degrees, and in this case, it is not wise to use 9 millimeter diameter. The abutment diameter is closely related to abutment height. Austin's stock abutment transfer abutment option ranges up to 7 millimeters. There is 7 millimeters of gingival height. As the gingival cuff increases, the emergence angle drastically decreases. You need to choose a button accordingly with this angle. Another factor to consider is where to position the abutment gingival height within the gingiva. We do not define absolute emergence angle depending on how much the implant is deep into the bone and depending on how the surrounding gingiva form is, we need to make a decision. I do not really prefer sub-margin. The reason why I prefer CAD CAM abutment is because following the patient's gingival margin, we can do equigingival margin or supragingival margin. By doing this, you can control cement easily and it's very easy to take abutment level impressions. So I prefer sub-gingival or equigingival abutments. 
I am repeating myself, but when we make a final prosthesis, if the implant has been placed slightly shallow, if the space that can be taken up by implant abutment is too tight, there can be peri-implantitis. Although there may be gap leading to food impaction, we need to secure a bit of space. This is 3 mm of height and 6 mm of diameter. In this case, the emergence angle is about 25 degrees. It's very favorable. Something that is slightly wider would be better, but if we do this, there can be food impaction. There is pros and cons. You need to explain about food impaction to the patient ahead and ways to address it. Just to secure emergence angle, in order to mimic natural teeth, using an extremely wide option is not wise. When we make a choice, be it a stock abutment or CAD cam abutment, in defining emergence angle, it needs to be about 30 degrees. In order to do that, implant placement angle should be quite deep. We need to consider implant placement position and abutment accordingly. With the advancement of digital dentistry, a lot of people use digital abutments. The digital abutment that has been mentioned is one fit abutment. Using CAD CAM technology, you can utilize different abutments, and these are collectively referred to as digital abutments. There is one fit abutment, and there is pre milled abutments available at the labs. Also, there is various types of link abutments. At dental clinic or lab, you can utilize zirconia along with Unisem or Panavia resin cement to provide digital abutments. These are actively utilized in clinical environment. When you utilize titanium, it is better to use gold-coated options. Personally, in aesthetic zone, I prefer type A subabutment which utilizes 0-1 fit. The cement which bonds zirconia and type A's together can cause problems. If the dimension is too tight and if the surface area of type A's is too significant, then you can just use this. When you use rod to utilize a pre-milled abutment, you need to use uh, products produced by the manufacturer. You should not use generic products. By doing this, you can prevent many issues. Zero one fit can be utilized in aesthetic zone. I used in number one and one. In the case of number two and two, where space is tight, you cannot use a tie base here, so I don't use it. The height and width is very important as well because you need to bond the zirconia, which requires a cementation. You need to consider that in choosing implant abutments. In today's lecture, I've talked about various abutments briefly. There's different implant systems available, and there's many different abutment types as well. You need to choose appropriate abutment to get the optimal results clinically. Because of time limitation, I was not able to go in detail. If you come to offline course, you'll be able to get information on um, different abutment indications and precautions that we need to take. Next year, we are planning a series of offline master course. I hope you come and get meaningful information. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you.